Let's switch gears with John Garcia, Jr., the director of recruiting for Sports Illustrated, and move a little bit further west in this uh, West Coast-based conference, of course, UCLA. Now, here's the interesting thing. Chip Kelly has never been known as a great recruiter, per se, like in a broad sense, right? Like he's brought in some high-level players, mostly on the offensive side of the ball. And so we'll get to a defensive guy that, that his team has coming in the class of 2022 in a second. But you don't think of him as a big-time recruiter. You think of him as a really good scheme guy on Saturdays, and that's what he became known for at Oregon. But sometimes he does bring in a high-level offensive player. And so Greg Dulcich is a guy who he got to pop the last couple of years. He's going to get drafted in the NFL. He was a big play tight end. And now with his departure, you kind of have a void at that position. Four-star tight end Jack Peterson. Is that the sort of player that you think could become a Greg Dulcich type, or is he, you know, sort of cast off a different mold as a tight end? I think he can make some of those same type of, of plays that Dulcich made. Obviously, Greg was a polished guy, had been in, you know, in in the in the team on the team for a few years uh, to develop, uh, as opposed to a freshman in, in Jack Peterson. But this is a modern, new age tight end. You know, he's two thirty five. He's not one of these two hundred sixty pound end of the line tight ends that you're asking to be an extension of, of your offensive line. You know, Jack Peterson can play in space, uh, which is where we saw Dulcich make such a, a big impact. And obviously getting Dorian Thompson Robinson to come back for like his 15th year at UCLA seemingly is a huge deal on top of that. You know, when you talk about an outlet, you know, Dulcich was his outlet, right? That was kind of the, it's hitting the fan, you know, where, where can I find Greg? Uh, I don't know if Peterson can assimilate to that as a freshman from a uh, reliability standpoint, but from a flash standpoint where you're talking about making plays and starting to build your resume, I do think Peterson has some of those same traits. And I think before they got Justin Martin committed at quarterback out of Inglewood, you know, Peterson was really the class headliner all the way through for this UCLA class of 2022, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. And like I said, he can play that H-back position where he's off the line scrimmage a little bit. We know Chip Kelly likes redirection uh, and, and some, some outside the box type stuff on offense. So I think when you counter with a guy like Jack Peterson, you can throw him shallow and allow him to run after the catch there as well. But he also has the frame if you do want to bulk him up to where he can be a little bit more of a conventional tight end, but usually offensively, uh, conventional is not the word that you think of with Chip Kelly, and, and that's why Peterson was such a big target and eventually a big commit for UCLA. I think he makes an impact early this fall. What about Kamari Ramsey, kind of the, the top defensive recruit, at least in the secondary in this class of 2022, pretty highly rated four stars, got good size. What sort of impact could he make this year for the Bruins? Yeah, I think that's the side of the ball that you're wanting to see come along a little bit for UCLA in 2022. And and Ramsey's got a lot of balance to his game. You know, like you mentioned, good size. Um, and I think he's got a versatile skill set that where he's very comfortable coming downhill. But, you know, he's a modern safety who's willing to play in coverage, got good range off of the hash, uh, and can play the football to a degree. But I think his combination of uh, ability to come downhill and, and play physical football will help uh, in the Pac-12. You, you think of some of these these programs, you know, conventionally we think of the Pac-12 and the Big 12 as like this throw-happy league. And I, I think that's starting to change a little bit. You know, Oregon over the last several years has moved into much more of a balanced offensive approach. We know what Utah is going to bring from a physicality standpoint. So if you want to win the league, you've got to be able to play physical defense and come downhill at the second and third level. And I think Wilson brings some of that uh, already as, as a true freshman, but he is no slouch in the cover game as well. I think he can play uh, that three-phase uh, ability that every good safety has to in this day and age. You kind of have to do a, a little bit of everything, and I think he's got the frame and the game for it. Yeah, you mentioned running the football. I, as an Oregon fan, know as well as anybody that Chip Kelly wants to run the ball first and foremost. And I want to ask you about that and kind of his reputation on the recruiting trail writ large with UCLA. After I tell you about Bet Online, your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments with Bet Online, your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online is where the game starts. No secret that cheap that cheap that Chip Kelly wants to run the football and. 
he's always recruited the sort of guys over years that that fit his scheme right back at Oregon it was you know primarily speed guys right on the offensive line on the perimeter as well that's kind of what he became known for I've noticed a, a shift in tone since he's gotten to UCLA bulking up a little bit more you know back in the day it was Michael James DeAnthony Thomas now it's Zach Charbonnet and Britton Brown leading the backfield right that's that's a little bit he's still you know the same sort of guy fundamentally wants to do the same sorts of things but he's doing it with a different style of players. But one thing that Chip has in terms of reputation is he's not all in on recruiting. He doesn't love recruiting. I think that's, you know, mostly a, a fair assessment, but I want your insight on kind of his evolution as a recruiter and the sorts of players that he's brought to his program. There's some similarities, but there's some differences as well. And then also, you know, he's not known as a great recruiter. And is that a, a fair way to assess him as a football coach? Well, when you see, you know, the game kind of pass him by on the recruiting trail when he happened to go to the NFL right around that same time, really hard to, to go back on that opinion. And I think, you know, there's a self-awareness element of it as well. I mean, at Oregon, you can recruit nationally. You're the flashy kind of new kid on the block, new school, modern, like every kid loves your uniforms, kind of trendy school. A lot, a lot easier to recruit nationally and offensively when, when you're that. At UCLA – totally different academically, different demographic. You're the little brother in town, much less in your state. So it's a totally different approach. So you go from national to regional. And I think that's where the, the sort of culture of Chip Kelly uh, was put into question uh, early on at UCLA. The fit was, was one of those that made you say, oh, kind of like what people were saying about Brian Kelly at LSU. It's like, oh, okay, Chip Kelly to UCLA. Okay, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And I think he's subtly adjusted to that where he is recruiting more regionally. Obviously, the state of California, incredibly fertile, but you got to go into Arizona. You got to go into Vegas. You got to go into Bishop Gorman and pull prospects out of there as well. So I think he's he's made that approach uh, to a more regional one, but you still have to recruit nationally if you're UCLA. And I think that's where the Chip Kelly offer doesn't have the same weight with this generation recruit like it did 10 years ago. Uh, UCLA becomes, oh, this is a nice academic offer, Pac-12 football, we're in LA, which NIL will, will help a school like UCLA. The perception of, of marketing in that, that city obviously uh, can help you, but overall, it's not the same weight. It doesn't carry the same weight as it did at Oregon, where that offer felt like a big national offer, where now all of a sudden the Ducks are immediately a contender for me. Well, UCLA is like, oh, this is a nice offer. Like, maybe I'll take a visit, as, as opposed to that Oregon offer, where it was like, I'm definitely taking a visit to Oregon. Like, this is not even a question. So I think changing that perception might be tough. Uh, which is why I think the refocus regionally does make some sense for UCLA. But there's no doubt that Chip Kelly, as a head coach recruiter, doesn't have that same umph as he did at Oregon or the same umph as, as the current top head coaching recruiters in the game when you talk about Sweeney and Saban and Kirby and, and those guys nationally. Even the younger uh, head coaches that have came, have come up in this modern recruiting era, you think of a Dan Landing, you think of a Luke Fickle, you think of a Matt Campbell, uh, even a Steve Sarkeesian that have kind of hit the ground running from the recruiting standpoint. And I think that's where we maybe oversold Kelly when he left the NFL to come back to college football. I think there was a big, big gap in time there, and, and we're maybe still seeing the effects of it.